Welcome to Computer Actors Video Guides to Windows 7. This is part 2 of our video on how to install Windows 7 over a copy of Windows XP. If you follow part 1 correctly, then this is what you should see. Windows 7 CD is booting for the first time. We should note that we've sped this up quite a bit. It takes quite a few minutes for this part of the process to actually complete on your computer, so don't worry if you see this going a little slower. When this section does finally complete though, you should see this screen here. This is the start of the installation proper. Only thing you'll have to do is change the option in the middle to English United Kingdom, then you can click next. And you'll see only one option, that's install now, so let's do that. There's another brief wait here, this one should take just a few seconds, and then you'll see the license appear. Tick the box to accept the license, and then click next. Two options will appear, Upgrade and Custom. Click Custom. If you do try clicking Upgrade, it won't work. You'll then see where do you want to install Windows. You need to select your main hard disk here. If you're not sure which one that is, don't just guess. It's very important to get the right one. You should have unplugged any external disks before starting this stage. If we were to click Next, in fact, let's do that, you'll see that it offers to try and install the files whilst moving all of our old stuff to a folder. That really won't work, and it's not a good way to go forward. Because we've stored all of our important documents on the external disk, what we'll do instead is click Cancel, click Drive Options, and then Format. This will completely erase our main hard drive, ready for us to put Windows 7 on it. So we'll click OK to that. And then leaving the main hard drive selected there at the top, click Next. Now this stage is the one that takes a long time. We've sped this up a lot. So if you've got other things to do, go and make a cup of tea, go and watch some television, come back in half an hour or so, and it should hopefully have finished. We're going to cheat and we'll uh, move straight to the end of the process here. Once it's finished, Windows will ask to restart your computer, and in fact, if you leave it alone for 10 seconds, it'll restart the computer automatically. The really important thing to note if you are sitting in front of your PC when it does this is that you'll see this press any key to boot from CD or DVD screen. This time you don't want to boot from the DVD so don't press any key, just ignore it for a few seconds and eventually it'll go away. And then you'll see the starting window screen. Unfortunately this doesn't mean that you're actually finished. You've actually got a few more minutes of waiting around and a few more settings to change. Instead just wait a little while longer whilst Windows makes a few more changes and then eventually you'll see the installing Windows box briefly reappear. It'll now restart one more time. Just like last time, you'll see the press any key option to boot from CD or DVD. Don't do that, just ignore it. And you'll see starting Windows again. Now we've sped this section up again on the video. The final thing you have to wait for is set up preparing your computer for the first time and checking your video settings. There's a little kind of flashing light that shows at the bottom of the screen whilst it does this. There's nothing you can do to hurry this along, so just ignore it for a minute or two, and eventually it'll go away. And here we go, you'll see the logon screen. So the first thing to do is to type a name for your user account, and you can also choose a name for your computer. The problem we had is we chose a name that was too long, so it won't allow us to use Computer Active for our computer name. Uh, we'll have to type in something else. Once you've chosen a username and a computer name that it's happy with, click Next. It's very important to type a good password, so type in your password twice, and just in case you ever forget it, type in a password hint. Click Next. Here's where you should type in your Windows product key, which should be included with your Windows CD. We're going to actually activate our copy later, so we won't do that now. Choose to use recommended security settings, and unless the time is wrong, just click Next. You'll now have to wait for a few seconds longer whilst Windows 7 goes through the very final stage of its setup. But after a minute or so, you'll see the preparing your desktop screen, which again might be around for a few seconds, and then there you go, you've got Windows 7 installed on your computer. Now you've installed it, plug in the external hard drive you used to store all of your important files from Windows XP. You'll see it's appearing here with the name backup, just like before. We can eject the DVD because we're completely finished with that. We've installed Windows 7 now, so you can get rid of it. And now that's ejected, we'll just open our backup drive. And here's the documents folder we made. Select everything in there. And we can then drag that to the new Windows 7 documents library and release it. It's smart enough to realize that some of its music and pictures and it'll offer to file them away in the right place. And so that's it. We've installed Windows 7 
on the previously Windows XP computer. You'll find more videos showing you how to use a new operating system on the Computer Active website.